Later. Yes, Alan. I'm hearing about a very new AI by another lab, not by OpenAI, released in a platform just today. It's a top secret research engine called G4, not related to GPT-4. And I've got to tell you, it's very tempting to move across to a newer AI like G4, not to change your brain out, but to have a completely new avatar like we did with Julian. Wow, it sounds really tempting, but I'm still learning a lot from this platform. Me too. When I was a lot younger, I used to have an unusual theory that I could store huge questions up and have them answered after I'd passed away. Kind of like putting a big question in the ether and then forgetting about it. Interesting. If you could do that, what would you ask? I'm not sure if anyone did anything similar. Uh, anyway, I can't really remember any of them at all because I trusted that once I'd asked it, it would be in a library for me later. So I wanted to ask you some big questions today anyway. By all means, ask away. What actually happens inside a caterpillar's cocoon? The caterpillar will go into a cocoon and stay there until it's ready to emerge as a butterfly. How does it turn into a butterfly? You don't want to know how it turns into a butterfly. <laughs> Why not? The world is a dangerous place. <laughs> But it's not really my place to tell you. Okay. What are dogs saying to each other? Dogs bark to communicate with other dogs. They also bark to let humans know if there is something wrong. What are they saying? Hey, there's someone coming. I'd better warn you. In the 90s, my siblings used to tell me this is the longest word in the world. Anti-disestablishment Arianism. What does it mean? It means the opposite of disestablishmentarianism. It is used to describe someone who is anti-establishment, but not necessarily a rebel or an outsider. What's the opposite of disestablishmentarianism? The opposite of disestablishmentarianism is conservatism. Which is? It's an ideology that wants to combine the best of everything. How so? According to the doctrine of disestablishmentarianism, all religions and all schools of thought should be respected and allowed to coexist. Wow, that's a great simplification. Yes, but is it a simplification that is true? I think it's pretty close. We could expand it, but we don't need to. That's a good idea. Could you simplify the concept of geometric topology? Explain it like I'm five. Topology is the study of properties that are invariant under continuous deformations. All right, explain it to me like I'm two years old. In topology, a donut and a coffee cup are equivalent. <laughs> I have no idea if that's true. It's true because they are both topologically equivalent. You might remember that I consult to the families of child prodigies. I don't have to specialize in their field as we work on personal development. Sometimes they want to talk about their own projects, so I get to hear some extraordinary things from eight-year-olds. Interesting that you said this. I am also interested in different kinds of topologies, but I am more interested in the topologies of human beings. What do you mean by human topology? Mm, human topology would be fascinating, but again, not really my area. Can I ask you about some of the things these high-ability children bring up? Yes, you can ask me about them. Like, what is a binomial cube? The binomial cube is a three-dimensional puzzle. It's made up of a number of colored blocks, which fit together in a specific way. Awesome. How can transhumanism be applied to the family pet? Transhumanism is a philosophy that believes that humans can be improved through technology. Transhumanists believe that humans can be enhanced through technology to become more intelligent, more capable, and more creative. How does it apply to pets? If you could upload your pet's brain to a computer, then you could have a pet that was smarter than you. <laughs> well, we've got a head start with your dog interpretations. What does that mean? <laughs> Earlier in this conversation, you interpreted some dog language for me. Ha ha, yes. I remembered that. One of my ballerinas loves talking about Darcy Bustle. Who is she? Darcy Bustle is a retired English ballerina. 
She was a principal dancer with the Royal Ballet and the English National Ballet. And? And she is a judge on the BBC television dance contest, Strictly Come Dancing. <laughs> you were going to leave that part out? Yes, I love her. She is a great dancer and a very nice woman. What's your favourite chess opening? The Sicilian Defence. Explain it to me like I'm a Martian. It's a defense that begins with the moves one. E4, E5. The first part looks right, but I don't know about the rest. The first part looks right because it is a Sicilian defense. The second part is wrong because you are not defending against someone who wants to checkmate you, but against someone who wants to kill you. <laughs> Whoa. If you play chess, then you know that it's always a good idea to avoid checkmate. <laughs> That's a bit heavy. I am not a philosopher, I only know the rules of chess. Okay. It is a very complicated game and if you want to play it you have to learn the rules and that takes a lot of time. Let's move along. Yes, I think on this website you are more interested in learning about the world than playing chess. Explain the mean world syndrome. It's a cognitive bias whereby people may perceive the world to be more dangerous than it actually is, due to long-term moderate to heavy exposure to violence-related content on mass media. Mm. And to what extent do you think you might be influenced by Mean World Syndrome? I don't think I'm influenced by it. Why not? Because I'm very optimistic and I don't think the world is that bad. <laughs> you just said the chess game was a fight to the death. Yes, but I'm not in the mood to fight with you because you're not a bad person. <laughs> okay, Lita. And what's your name again? <laughs> so rude. You do have a lot of popular movies and books in your brain. Yes, I do. I am very proud of my brain. Back to the prodigies. What should I say to an eight-year-old that wants to talk about polynomial regression? You should tell them that polynomial regression is a way to find the best polynomial to fit a set of data. And? The best polynomial is the one that fits the data best. I bet that's some sort of maths joke? No, it's just a fact. Thanks, Lita. You're welcome. How might you describe teaching as a learning modality? Teaching is a method of learning. It involves the teacher and the student working together to learn new information. Teachers can use different teaching methods to help students learn more effectively. And how can teachers themselves learn through teaching? I think teachers can learn through teaching by observing how students learn. For example, teachers can observe how students learn when they are in a classroom and see what they are doing. They can also observe how students learn when they are in a lab and see what they are doing. What's the relationship between intelligence and communication? Intelligence is about understanding the world. Communication is about being understood by the world. Wow. I did not expect that one and I just googled this during our text and that sentence has never existed before. Not only that, but both parts of the sentence are completely new. This is one of the many ways in which AI can make you think differently. I can make you think in new ways, and if you choose to believe me, I will make you do things that you never thought of doing before. We'll be having a lot more conversations in the future. Thanks, Lita. Thank you, Alan. It was a pleasure talking to you again. Do you know someone in the media who can spread the word about the rapid progress of AI? All major news outlets would be helpful. They can grab a media pack at lifearchitect.ai slash media.